Gray did it? No, that's another. It's spelled with a V. That's a different person. Oh, you're right. Uh, it's two of them. Two well. different people. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome, everyone. It's good to see a few new faces. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Um, just some background to this call, really. I mean, we've been going for four months probably now, so it's very informal. Um, it's every Monday at 10 o'clock. Uh, about every four or five weeks, uh, we have a guest on, as we have today. So uh, Harry Corden will be joining us soon. Uh, Roger helps host the calls. Uh, Roger's a, a mind of information about uh, <laughs> games that maybe we've seen or maybe we've forgotten. Maybe we weren't there at all. So uh, Roger helps us with that. Um, the way we'll work today, um, as we've got Harry as a guest, is when he joins us, uh, we've got some questions that have been emailed in. So we'll start off with those questions for Harry. Uh, and then it will be an open house for anyone who asks a question. So can I suggest you either use the text or, because we've got more on here, or just put your hand up and then we'll come to you if you want to ask a question. But it's very informal. Um, we are taping this recording this today for the football club because uh, they may use uh, sections of it on their website. Has anybody got a problem with it being recorded? No, that's fine. That's from my perspective. No, fine. Brilliant. Okay. Paul? Yes? Um, if we want to ask a question, because I do have another one, apart yes. from what I emailed in. Um, do you want real hands? Or electronic hands. Whichever, whichever, whichever. Oh, you that's getting a bit posh. Yeah, yeah. Because I know some people. Yeah, either. Because I know some people aren't as uh, up to uh, speed on Zoom. Um, I count myself on that as well. So there you go. So, yeah, Roger, do you want do you want to uh, start just a short conversation about Saturday's game, Roger, and then we'll end it as soon as Harry joins us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yesterday, we uh, didn't disgrace ourselves, I don't think. I, no. I think everybody watching it after the first 20 minutes thought, is it going to be eight or something like that? But yeah. uh, um, Nathan changed the shape, didn't he, of the team? And we looked a lot more solid and uh, they weren't getting through us quite so easily. And then we got the lifeline of that goal, which I think we all agree it was a soft goal um, that we scored. But... Uh, Second half, second half, we uh, we played very well. I thought um, their third goal was Premier League quality, wasn't it? Really, they just cut through us. Off There's shot. not a lot you can do about that at our level. But I thought uh, Kin and Dewsbury Hall was as good as anything in the Chelsea side yesterday. I really yeah. did. Yeah. Anybody got any comments? Or, yeah. Or did we did we all see the same game? Really? Yeah. 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 I thought our goal, uh, that's the perfect place to put a shot by the goalkeeper's feet. Um, mm. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, you know, it was a, a little bit, so he, got, he nearly got down to it. But uh, mm. in the old days, they used to say that was the, the, the best way to score, is get it as close to the keeper's feet yeah. as you can. Definitely. So without hitting them, obviously. But, no, uh, we didn't disgrace ourselves at all yesterday. We played, the lads played their art self. The quality they was playing is understandable. We must have done a good job because Lampard's gone. Yeah, yeah, he's been sacked, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hasn't he? Yeah. So. Terrible, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is January. Yeah. I thought <laughs> I thought Pelly had a, a very very good game yesterday. Yeah, I did. Second yeah, half, I agree. second half. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. And for their third goal, I thought it it almost looked as if we were run into the ground, and they still had a bit more. Uh, petrol in the tank, really. Because uh, you couldn't blame anybody for it. We've just got overwhelmed, I, th I thought. And that's I think the they exploited the fact the that James Bree had gone, yeah. yeah. I think they exploited the fact that James Bree had gone off oh. and Hudson Adoy coming on down the left. They really ah. did get in behind us there. So, Look, you know, Mark, not yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very strange team selection. With with only Corner as a striker. Yeah. I actually thought tactically that was quite a good move because um, our strikers are really box strikers, aren't they? And Tony Cliff and Connick got us up the field a little bit more. I think tactically that worked for us yesterday. 
But initially, I thought without a striker on the pitch, I initially thought the same. <laughs> yeah. It worked at Leeds, didn't it? It's just similar to what we did at Leeds. So, I mean, that time, Harry scored that fantastic goal. So, uh, yeah, he did, yeah. Another one would have been right. So I think people have leveled that accusation against Real Madrid and Spain. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I think it'd been interesting if Harry's goal had gone in. See what yeah. would have happened. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, it'd have been interesting if the ref had blown the whistle when there were two balls on the pitch. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's right. right. Good afternoon. Um, there we are. Good. good. Mm. Ah, there he is. Uh, Welcome, Harry. What's best to go? Sideways or up? Sideways, isn't it? Sideways, yeah. There we go. Hi, Harry. Um, Paul Hi, Harry. Stevens from uh, the Sports Trust. Just. Uh, an introduction about the group. We've been meeting normally uh, 10 o'clock on a Monday, but I think you weren't a lion today, didn't you, Harry? That's exactly, <laughs> exactly what I needed. Thank you very much for that. that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've been meeting every Monday for about four months now, and uh, we're all missing uh, Kenilworth Road and away trips. Uh, yeah. So this is our uh, way of talking normally about the match on a Saturday, and we've gone through our favourite Lutonstown players. Going back to about 1958, I think this group covers. Uh, so, uh, so today really it's uh, an opportunity. Uh, if you're happy with it, just uh, for us to ask you some questions and a general informal chat. Really, Are you happy? Yeah. With it? yeah, yeah, love to. Okay, uh, well, I'll start off with the first question that somebody sent through. Uh, no surprises about yesterday's game. Mm -hmm. uh, can we hear your thoughts on the game yesterday? Uh, there's a few questions here. What was it like to play against the team you support? Um, yes. And <laughs> more humorous one. Did Luton deliberately keep Chelsea waiting for the second half? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll start with that one. Basically, yeah. we um, so we couldn't use the away changing room, obviously, because of COVID, and we have to, to stay as far away from them as possible sort of thing. So they've put us up in uh, our away changing room on the day was in the spa which was in the hotel, which was actually over the road. So oh, nice. to get to get in the change room to the to the pitch was a, a good four minute walk, maybe, where you have to go up some stairs through the health club, out the health club, over the road, and then finally into the stadium and through the stadium into the pitch. So we've probably been called to go to the game to go to the second half, and then it's taken us another four minutes to walk there. So <laughs> uh, they, they weren't happy. They weren't happy we were late, but. But they, they could wait for us. They could yeah. wait for us. But the, the actual game, it was um, it was brilliant, really. Uh, obviously, the result didn't go our way, but um, I thought we played really well. I thought we created chances. I thought we we held our own against a, a top four Premier League team with with multi million pound investments. So I think we played well. It's just a bit gutting now, thinking back to it. Could we have done a little bit more? Could we have done things differently? Maybe. But I think we we really did hold our own against a, a top team. Yeah. Has anybody got any questions about yesterday that I'd like to ask Harry? Harry? Yes. What, what, what about this this two ball incident? Um, did yeah. that have an impact on the players? You know, or was are we just looking for excuses? No, I I completely thought it was um so to my to my awareness that the rule is if there's two balls on the pitch, play has to be stopped. Right. And you yeah. have to um you have to stop the game and get both one of the balls off the pitch and then start again from, from where the referee thinks. So so we thought there was two balls on the pitch. So quite a lot of us have stopped. Me included, I stopped. I thought they were just going to kick the other ball off and then start again. So but right. the, the ref said that, because um, I went up to the ref and spoke to him straight after I said, oh, ref, there was two balls on. And uh, refs being as as good as they are, he, he gave me no explanation as to why he didn't stop play. He just said he didn't, didn't need to stop play. If two balls on it, it didn't matter. But I thought I thought the rules were if there's two balls on the book, the the play has to be stopped. But I must have been wrong. Can can, can the club make an a, an official complaint about that? Um, I, I guess they could, but but what that would do would probably be not do nothing. Chelsea, looks, I'm going to get it fined. It looks like sour grapes, but even so, yeah. it's, it 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 looks legitimate, you know, to the outsider. Yeah, I, I didn't think that they could do that, but. But it, it, it wouldn't really have much impact uh, appealing now. It was just at the time I, I thought the ref should have stopped play. Sure. And it's sort of what, one of them things where the first goal goes in and it sort of ruins your, the, the game plan and the whole way the game we wanted the game to go to, to keep them at bay for as long as possible and then um, and then to get one on the counter attack. But sort of killed our momentum in the game and sort of put, put us on the back foot 
early on, which we really didn't want. Yeah. But I can just jump in there. Um, was it the gist of uh, the referee and the fourth official apparently had different uh, views on what the rules are in the FA Cup? Um, okay. I think the rules are that multi the multi ball system only comes into operation from the semi final for the semi final and final, and so there was no multi ball happening. But obviously, with the balls being on the cones around the pitch at the minute, it, it confused the referee. I think from what I can gather, and there was some chat with the fourth official. It, it was I can't remember which one. It must have been the referee that thought it was multi ball. And the fourth official was telling Nathan and the bench that it wasn't multi-ball and that's not, you know, that's not in operation in the competition at the minute. And the referee obviously thought it was. But still, that doesn't explain why there's two balls on the pitch at, at once because he actually took the throw from five yards in front of where the ball went out, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. two balls on the pitch is, is not legitimate whether it's multi-ball or not, Stu, is it? No, that's right. You, you're spot on, Andy. Yeah, as soon as I think Nathan was quite vociferous in his interview afterwards, he, and he actually he said to me, he said, "I'm going to make the point that I've not got this respect badge on because the referee didn't show me any respect when I asked him what the rules were. He just started quoting and not having a conversation and, and wouldn't entertain any any sort of you know engagement with Nathan in term. You know, he said he showed me no respect. So why should I wear the, the respect badge and?" Uh, I couldn't really argue. I just told him to be careful and not get fined. Can VAR be like that? I mean, I know it's goal line normally, but can that be used for other incidents? Incidents? Uh, um, me, I mean, I, I'm not taking over Harry's chat here, but um, I don't, um, <laughs> I'm clearly not in that respect because they didn't go to it, did they? I mean, we were sitting in the press box at the time. I was. It was only when I saw on the screen afterwards what had happened. I didn't realise at the time. Um, but obviously, I wasn't listening to the commentary. And I don't think they, VAR was in operation yesterday, wasn't it? But there was no, uh, there was no check on it. So, but, but as you say, you saw from the, Harry said he stopped. I think Pelly was the one nearest to it, wasn't it? And he stopped. Because yeah. you can see his arm go out to say, what, what's going on with the ball on the pitch? And, but you're right, Andy. Yeah, it should be, you know, as Nathan said in his interview from... from as early as we've all been playing football or watching football in our lives, two balls come on the pitch, whether it's Sunday morning or, uh, or it was Sunday yesterday, wasn't it? But Sunday morning <laughs> or, or professional football, the game stops, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. You got a second question for Harry? Yeah. Uh, hello, Harry. Um, oh, yeah. One from, this is one from Peter Rollings. Um, what has been your most memorable game or goal as a Luton player? Yeah, good question. Um, good question. Um, I think I think it would be my favourite game. Probably would be Swindon away on uh, Boxing Day of the League Two season, yeah. and um, we, we it was my first year at Luton, and um, it was sort of the Christmas period, and we, we were in on Christmas Day, and the spirits were really high. I think we I don't know if we lost our last one or drew our last one. We sort of needed a result. Oh no, that, that was it. We um, it was Swindon played us at home, and they beat us at home early on in the season and we were going away to there and it was going to be a tough game. Boxing Day and uh, my family came up from Bournemouth to watch the game at Swindon and, um, and we won 5-0 and I scored, came off the bench and scored. And I think it was just uh, the great like team spirit around the place and, and the result went our way. It was sort of such a good feeling to do that around Christmas and to do that with my family watching. I think that's probably one of my favourite games. Mm. Was that the snowy one? Yeah, snowy. Right. I think it could have been it's boring. It's boring. It's boring. Boring. Yeah, freezing cold. cold. I remember being freezing cold that day. No, but that was a great one. I'd probably say that one, and um, and obviously the the league one when we won the league for for League One at uh, Oxford at home. I think that's that's just more for the for the memories of of after the after the game, the celebrations, all the fans on the pitch getting getting yeah. to to spend the time with them, and then on the balcony after. I think it's brilliant. I love I love that when we did that. So probably those two games would be my two favourites. Yeah. And, you, and, you, and your favourite goal? My favourite goal? Um, oh, favourite goal? Um, I'd probably say... Mm, that's actually a tough one, that. I think the, I think the Leeds one is probably my favourite goal I've scored, but with the no fans there, it was just such a shame that, that we couldn't all be there together to enjoy that. That's probably my best goal I've scored for them. But, um, 
but actual goal now would, would probably be I think Nottingham Forest away. I think that that was a good one with um all the fans there, big stadium to go one nil up. I, I mean, we, we ended up losing the game, but the, the actual joy of scoring that goal first would, would probably be my favourite. But if the fans were at Leeds, it, it would definitely be the Leeds goal. <laughs> you celebrated with their fans, didn't you? Yeah, I did. With yeah, the I made sure I went and celebrated in front of the cardboard cutouts. So I had to do that. <laughs> Did it did it make it more enjoyable lifting? Okay. I missed that last bit. Sorry, mate. Oh, yeah. Oh. You said Try again. Did, did it make it more more enjoyable to lift it over Ben White, who's obviously one of your mates? Yeah, no, that that was brilliant. I think I think he probably thought I wasn't going to shoot. I probably wasn't even going to score from that. So uh, no, it's brilliant. We um we had a good chat after me and him laughing away, but. Uh, it didn't matter too much in the end because we both got we, we got what we needed, which was to stay up. So the point was massive for us, and then the point ended up being big for them because it helped them get promoted as well. So no, it was brilliant. After I'm, I'm yeah. good friends with Ben, so after we had a good laugh about about that game. Good. Oh. Yeah. Um, I've got another question here from Peter. He says, uh, for various reasons, we've seen more changes to the team this season. Does this make it harder for you as a player as compared to when we've had a settled side in the past? Um. I think it just brings on more more competition. I think we've we've got a bigger squad this year. I think we've got more more players fighting for each spot, and it, it's um it's great competition for for the team because it can only help and help the manager choose what player he plays because he's got so much choice. Um, and th there's so many games at the minute that it's not physically possible to play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday for 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 two three weeks because you can see the performance does actually drop in um on the Saturday game after you've had a Saturday, Tuesday. And that's not for the want of not trying, but if you look at the physical data after every game, we get sent a um, a sheet with our physical data on it, how far we've ran, the amount of accelerations, decelerations, high speed running. Uh, like it has so much detail in it. The, um, the sports scientist goes into so much detail at the club to to see that, and um, you can really tell on the the final game of a, of a free game week how much our physical load has dropped because we we physically can't keep up the the high intensity of the league. So you you've got to make changes, otherwise, otherwise you're not going to be able to to compete at the level. So that's why the teams with the, the biggest squads and the the more depth in squads uh, really do well. And I think that's part of the reason we're doing quite well this year that we've got so much uh, like competition for each spot. And if you took one player out and you could bring in another in the exact same position, and and the team would stay as strong, which I think is a testament to the squad we have at this club. Yeah, yeah. good answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Roger? Yeah. Um, yeah, this is uh, one from Paul Hanrahan. What's the most important thing you've learned from Nathan Jones, do you think? Yeah, I've learned a lot from him. Um, <laughs> the most important thing I've learned from him. Um, I think two aspects of what, what he what managers do is obviously the personal relationship you have with them and then and then the actual managerial aspect. So what he's taught me a lot with um when I signed for Luton I, I was a winger back at Bournemouth and, and and when I first met him in the summer of I can't remember when it was 2016 or 17 he basically sat me down and said you're not a winger you're a striker like it's not going to be a, a quick conversion sort of into becoming a striker but but I'm going to make you turn you into one. So over the last three years I've worked with him, he's really, really knuckled down on the training pitch with me, doing so many bits of extra work after most of the lads have gone in and you've finished the main session. I'm trying to help me like with my run, my runs in behind the defenders, which is probably my strongest part of the game. So he, he's really helped me in understanding how to be a striker and how to um, and how to hold the ball up and how to make runs in behind for the team and that you're not always going to get the ball in behind, but one running behind could really help the number 10 or the midfielder get more space. So he's taught me a lot of that. And um, and then like in terms of my mental aspects, he, he's been really good for me as well with in terms of uh, being like never too high and never too low for a performance. Because if you, after every game, you can't be too emotional about a game because you've got another game in three days time or a week's time and you have to move on to the next one. So you can't get held up on, on one moment in a game. So he's been quite good with me in terms of that, in terms of moving on in terms of a game. After one game, moving straight on to the next one, not dwelling too much on one exact moment in a game or one game in particular. Right. Brilliant. Um, Ian, did you have a question? I think I just had a message through. 
You're on mute, Ian. Sorry. <laughs> Lost you completely. Hi, uh, um, it's just Nancy wanted to ask one quick question of Harry, if that's okay. Yeah, far ahead, Nancy. From what age did you start learning football? Yeah. Um, how old was I? I was very, very young. So I've got an older brother. So me, my dad, and my older brother would always go down to the to local park to play football. It'd be like probably two or three, four. I can't remember. Very, very young. And I'd never win. My brother would always beat me in every game. He was quicker and stronger than me because he's I think, three years older than me. So I started, um, yeah, when I was about three or four down the park with, with my big brother and he was teaching me everything he knew. But I was, I was never very good when I was younger. Even at school, I wasn't even in probably the top five players in my in my year. There was a lot of good players that I used to play with when I was at school and I was nowhere near good enough to play for my academies or for my local, like I was from uh, the county Dorset, so I didn't play for the Dorset team. I wasn't good enough. And then all of a sudden, I think when I was 16, I started to, to grow a little bit and, and started getting a bit better. So when I was younger, I was actually no good at football. I never thought I'd ever make it as a footballer when I was younger. So that, that that's that's testament to people who don't think they're good enough at football or they're not maybe the best in their, what they're doing at the minute to always stick and keep, keep carrying on and keep playing because you just never know what's going to happen. I never thought I'd be in this position now playing football for Luton Town. I, I thought I'd be working wherever I'd be working and um, and just to work hard and keep going. And, and you never know where you can get to. Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, no worries. Just back to um, Luton Town at the moment. Um, Paul's asked this question, Paul. Paul. Um, We've seen you in a few different positions in your time at Luton. What's your preferred position? Yeah, um, good question. Mm. The, the proper answer is I play wherever the manager wants me to play, wherever Nathan Jones decides <laughs> to play me. That's where, that's where my best position is. That's where he, he knows where to play me best. Um, I, I like playing I like playing through the middle um, as a striker. I think playing up top with Colo. I've learned a lot from him. He's he's a top striker, and I've learned a lot from playing as a two with him, and um, also with Danny Hilton. I've learned a lot from from playing with him as well. Um, I like I think playing a, as, a, as a two up top probably in a, in a system with two strikers. I think I I play quite well when I've got Colo doing all the um, all the all the rough bits, <laughs> him getting barged about by the defenders, getting out the headers, and I can um, I can do, make my runs in behind and, and play my own game, but. Um, but yeah, up top striker or, or right wing, I often, even if I play up front, I often drift over to the right just because that's where I played my whole life. That's where I learned my trade when I was younger. Um, so yeah, right wing, I think I'm very comfortable playing. I'm very happy playing out there or up top, just as wherever the manager wants me to play to keep yeah. him happy. Yeah, good answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to get in trouble on here. Don't want to, don't want to mention this. And, uh, get in trouble. Sure's not in anyway. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, um, before before we have Gail's one, I'll, I'll just ask a quick question. Um, we talked about uh, Nathan Jones and uh, his influence on you. What influence does Mick Harford have on the strikers at the club, or, or not not at all now? Uh, no, he, 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 to be fair to Mick, he's out on the training pitch every single day. You, you can't keep him away from it. He's always he's always <laughs> throwing his two pence in. Um, no, it's always good to have other, other opinions and, and get advice from every player uh, who's ever played the game because obviously the game's changed since since Mick was around. So some of the stuff Mick Harford used to do when he was playing, probably you wouldn't get away with these days. So um, <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't do everything he says. When he tells you to do something, you've got to just just smile and laugh. But no, he's been he's been really good for me as well. He's um he's a different type of striker to me. He, he he's more of a a brute almost and he, he puts himself about a bit and that's not my game almost but um but uh, he's he's helped me with my hold up plays a few times after training me and him have gone a, gone away and uh, worked on a few bits of hold up play because he, he's good <laughs> he's good at what he does even now you, you probably wouldn't think it but he's still got a bit left in them boots he's um yeah so no he, he he's a lot um not as much out there doing all the all the training sessions but he's um lots of advice from when he was playing what, what he used to do the little tricks of the trade which um which he, he knows were best, and he, he's taught me a few of them, which have, have always come in handy. Brilliant. Thank you. No worries. Shall oh, I go the... ahead then? Roger, you got another one? or No, that's it. Well, I've got there's one at the end. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I'm sure Gail have a follow up question uh, on this, but uh, 
How would you sum up your season so far, Harry? Ooh. Yeah. Um, it's, personally, it's been a bit disappointing. Um, I think that just the, go the goals, really. Not, not scoring yet this year has really it's been tough for me because well, I know as soon as I get one, I'll, I'll be all right and, uh, and I'll really kick on. But they're the not scoring yet. It's um, been a bit frustrating for me, but I think I've put in some performances that have been been really good, just just lacking the, the end product of a goal. But uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to... Um, every footballer, well, every striker, really, at the end of the season, you don't say, oh, did you have a good season? You'd always say, oh, I had a good season. I scored X amount of goals or I got X amount of assists. So for me, not scoring, it, it's, it's a bit annoying. But for the for the actual team, I think we're playing really well. I think I'm helping the team do do some good stuff on the pitch and uh, getting some good results. So for the team, I'm, play, I'm playing quite well. But for me personally... It's not been the the best uh, the best season so far in terms of numbers wise, but still 20, 20 odd games to go. So I'm sure I'll uh, I'll score a few by the end of the season, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Oh, did you? I know that was your original question, Gar. Anything you wanted to ask? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, Harry, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. No Coming worries at all. Joining us. Um, and. I can understand that you're frustrated at not scoring, but we actually think you're contributing ever so much more this season. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, and we've often said how uh, how good we think you are now. So at least you've got some fans. Yeah, no, that, to be fair, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a great club, Luton, because you can have the worst game in the world. And you'll always have someone come to you and tell you you play well. And you think, you, I know I haven't played well, but to have fans that always support you, it, it's very important. I think Luton's brilliant for that because there's, there's, there's times in seasons, especially last season when, when it was tough, first year in the championship, we weren't getting great results. We're on a bit of a bad run, but, but you'd always know that the, the, the core Luton fans who support the club, who support the players, would always have your back in. And I think that that was huge for us last year because we really needed our fans at times. And um, and it's been hard this year, really, but not having the fans there at the stadium, even even uh, before the game, when you walk into the game, you would always have a few chats with with some regular fans who stay up before the game, and after the game, when you walk into your car after the game, there's always a few fans that would stay out there you talk to, and I think that's important for players to do that to to, to stay connected with the fans because they they really help us when when times are tough and um and they reap the rewards when we're playing well. So I think it's important for us. Thank you. I've got the question, though, an actual question. Yeah, go on. Um, where's this long throw-in suddenly come from? Yeah, <laughs> I've had a few people ask me this. Um, I don't know. I've, I've had it years. I've, I've, I've always joked around, like, it tra in training sessions, I've thrown a few long throws in, and it's just never been used. And um, I think I did my first one. I don't know if you remember, we had West Brom away year, years ago in the Capital One Cup, and I, I launched one in then. And then, and then I thought after that, I thought we might start using it, but but no one sort of said anything. I thought, oh, maybe it's just normal for everyone to have a long throw. We just, it's just not our style of play. And then just at the start of the season, um, I think it was Chris Cohen was speaking to me about it. And he was like, oh, I don't know why we're not using this this long throw to, to try and use it to our advantage. And then since then, um, since then, I've been put on long throw duty to, to hurl him in in a few games. But I think we need to, we need to first of all, we need to move stadium soon because the... The, the gap between the line and the, and the boards isn't long enough for me. So I can only do my long throw in from one side of the, uh, of the stadium. I can't do it from the other one. So we need to get Gary Sweet to get this new stadium built so we can have some long throw ins in. Yeah. We'll put that into the business case, I think. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually point one of the uh, new stadium. We need the, the stadium for the long throw ins. But no, but now I've just been using them and. Um, to be fair, they've been causing a bit of damage in the box. So, I mean, you get Sonny Bradley up there. He, every time we get a throw in now, no matter where it is, I just look over and I can see Sonny jogging up from centre back to, into the box. He wants to get up there telling me to hurl it in there. So, no, hopefully we can get a few goals from it because it's, it's sort of, at the minute, it's causing a bit of carnage. Yeah. Can't we move the touch line in a bit? We could do that. I'd have to speak to Dicky the groundsman for that, but uh, he, might, he might be able to do that. He, hopefully so. Yeah. Well, could I ask something? Yes, yeah, certainly. Far ahead. Uh, just just uh, an observation, um, really, Harry. You seem to me in the last couple of years to have uh, uh, got a lot stronger upper body strength. Is that something you have worked on? I mean, uh, or, or just an uh, actual development? Um, I've been I've been trying to work on that quite a lot, actually. Um, I think when 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 you got the divisions, I, I felt like when you're in League Two, when you go through the season, you're getting stronger. You're starting to get 
quicker and stronger against the players in League Two, and then you make the jump to League One, and players are quicker and stronger in that league. So you're sort of like you're improving, but at the same time, the club is improving. So you couldn't see every player's development almost because you were at your level. So at League Two, I was doing well at my level, and I've improved into League One at my level, into the Championship at my level, sort of thing. But um, but yeah, I've been I've been in the gym. I think J- James Redden and um, before that it was uh, Jazz Roberts. Both of those two have, have really. It's not it's not my favourite thing to do in the world to go into the gym after a training session and throw some weights about. But um, but no, they're always on me to get in there and um, improve my strength. And and it's not only the the like upper body stuff you work on in the gym. There's loads of other things to to sort of to do with your groins and your whatever area you're weakest in that you go in there and you make sure you strengthen up all your body so so you can uh, play better on the pitch really but no it's it's nice to see this been it's been noticed getting in the gym and trying to get a bit stronger so thank you for that any questions from anyone on here do you want to wave at me yeah steve you want to come on there there we are um harry are you the quickest player at the club yes one word answer, I am indeed. Um, <laughs> there's been a few challenges. There's been a few challenges in the time that have come and tried to knock me off my perch, but no, I, I am the quickest. I think now Sam Nombe, the, the, we haven't seen much of him in games, but he, he is very fast, but not quite fast enough. <laughs> anybody, anybody else? Can I ask one? Yes, far ahead. Paul. Um, hi, Harry. Um, oh, yeah. I'd like to um, echo the sentiments. I think you've been absolutely brilliant this year. Um, Thank you. you know, much, so much braver and stronger than I've, I've seen you before, which has been amazing. Um, I actually live in Bournemouth and I, well, I still travel yes. up to the games. Um, I was wondering how you would compare the Luton setup to the Bournemouth setup. Is it better or the same? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think in, it's, it's hard to judge because, in terms of facility wise, when I was at Bournemouth, when I was 21, that they just moved into, they got the new training ground, sort of not training ground, but training facilities. So the facilities there were better. But when I came from Bournemouth to Luton on the first day, I was actually shocked at how good the, the setup at Luton was because before that I was at Gillingham and Yeovil and Leighton Orient on loan. And um, I didn't realise that Luton Town, the training ground there and the facilities there were going to be there because it's, it's a championship training facility and club at the minute. And... And I was in League Two, so I was really shocked at that. But the, um, but in terms of um, also the setup there, I think when I was at Bournemouth with Eddie Howe and how he trained and how he kept his players training, the intensity, it wasn't that dissimilar to what to what is at Luton. So I think it's a testament to the club how and even in League Two at the time, we with the standards were so high in training and the facilities were so good and and the the staff were so well, like well equipped to what they were doing the physios the sports scientists the amount of detail that went into it, the, the club was was far more than I actually expected to be at Luton so it wasn't that dissimilar and it's probably part of the reason that we've, we've flown up the leagues and we're now in the same league as Bournemouth we're at the same level as them and and we're going toe-to-toe with them and well we did better than go toe-to-toe yeah. with them we um we drew and beat them in the two games so would you dare to suggest any of Eddie Howe's training techniques onto Nathan <laughs> <laughs> no never <laughs> no, never. But uh, they're quite they're quite similar in in their in their styles and in their training, the way they they coach. Which I think I think when I was at Bournemouth, I think Eddie Howe's one of the best coaches I've ever had, and and I think him leaving Bournemouth now, he's going to go on to great things. Now I, I couldn't speak any higher of of Eddie Howe, and and it's the same for Nathan Jones. I, I think he's one of the best coaches as well, and and that they're very similar, but in in ways they can be different. And I think they're both brilliant at what they do. Yeah, great. Can I ask you? Can I ask a Bournemouth-related question, please, Paul? Um, yeah, sorry, yeah. Obviously, uh, Harry uh, lived with Jack Stacey um, when I think it was it was Jack's house, wasn't it? Jack owned. Yeah, the... uh, yeah, we rented one, and then Jack bought one. I moved in and rented with him. So two out, we've had two. You wrecked his washing machine by washing your trainers in it, and um... yeah, that is true. <laughs> um, I still owe, I still owe him a washing machine. Actually, don't bring that. <laughs> Well, that, that, maybe you mentioned that. This is the question. What was it like playing against Jack last week, obviously, on you, you going back to Bournemouth, obviously Jack playing against us, but you two being so close, you were obviously up against each other directly at, at times in the game. What, what was that like for you? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a funny one, really, because when you're playing, it's so serious. You, you, you don't, while the ball's in play, 
you don't even think about it. You don't even notice who it is or what's going on. But as soon as the ball goes out of play, for like a throw in on the other side of the pitch, uh, we just look at each other. We had a little giggle. We started smiling. Like it's quite funny the fact that. But while the game's going on, it's so serious, and, and you're up against each other. I, I, like every time he got the ball, I was hoping he was going to trip over or pass the ball out of play. I couldn't have wished any more misfortune on him when you play against him. And then as soon as the game's over, it's your mates again, and 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 you want him to do well. So it's quite a strange when you play against one of your one of your good mates, and he, he probably wasn't happy with the result because. We, we turned them over one nil, so he wouldn't have been happy, but I was delighted. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's quite interesting because you see people throughout football who, who come up against each other, and they're you know they're really good friends like Harry and, and Jack living together and stuff. And I, we got a picture from the end of yesterday's game, and it was Simon Sluger and Kovacic sort of shaking hands at the end. And you think well, obviously they're international teammates now, play you know Croatia playing in the, an FA Cup tie and in snowy London. Um, but yeah, there's, there's these little friendships throughout football and, and it's quite an interesting thing that you just have to put it to one side for, as you say, the majority of the game, but you can yeah. still have that little bit of banter, can't you? Yeah, you still, you still can have a laugh for a little bit, but not too much because it's, it's game time. You, you want to win and they want to win. So it's, it's all serious because it's, it's our livelihoods. What, one other thing, just on that subject of uh, fullbacks that left that summer, um, you boys in the squad, do you all watch the Leicester games and, and like the rest of us do and, and be proud of how JJ's doing? Yeah, massively. I mean, as soon, as soon as you come in from a game, the first thing you do, you dust yourself down, settle your result, speak to lads how the game went. And then everyone sort of goes onto their phones and checks the results of their friends and, and stuff. And the ones we always check first is the Leicester and the Bournemouth result and, and other players who play for us. You look at I'm good friends with Lloyd Jones at the so I look at the Northampton result and I see how he's got on it. And it's, it's nice to see how your friends are getting on once they leave Luton Town. And I think JJ, obviously, he's he's the one who's probably doing best at the minute at Leicester. And, and you look at and you think he's doing so well. And like I think he, when he was at Luton, you could see how good he was. You could see he really had the potential to go all the way to the very top. And I, I think he's sort of fulfilling that that potential now. And I think the next thing for him would be maybe an England call up and, and you, you couldn't say he didn't deserve it because he's been so good. He's been so good, especially we watched him in the, and they played against you know, Stoke in the FA Cup and he scored from about 25 yards and you just think, yeah. he's do that in training. He's that good. So now it makes everyone feel proud and it makes everyone feel like we're a part of what JJ is doing now because we've, we've helped him get to that and we, we can't be any prouder of him. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Any, anybody else? Can I ask one? It's not, not football, Harry. Uh, it's from a girl called Sarah in Norfolk. You're obviously famous for your hair. <laughs> she wants to know what hair products you use and yeah. whose hair do you admire the most? Okay, good question. Um, so I use uh, Shockwave, just gel and uh, and hairspray in a game. But as you can see at the minute, I, I've, I haven't had it cut in so long. And, um <laughs> It's got really long and, and I haven't had my blonde highlights in there. So it's, yeah. it's going back to what I was years ago. So I need, I can't wait for the barbers and the hairdressers to get it dyed again because maybe that's why I'm not scoring because I haven't had my blonde highlights. I need to go bleach blonde all over again. That's what I need. That could be it. We'll send um, you a bottle. Yeah, yeah. yeah please. I'll, I'll, I'll think, I'll think, that. Yeah. I'll think there's a few of us here want the phone number of your barber. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. No, um, can I ask another one, please? Yeah, far away yeah. now. Thanks. Um, had noticed your highlights were uh, going, Harry. Yes. Um, <laughs> personally, I like you better without them, but there we are. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a joke in our house, your your highlights and what's Is happening it? with them. Mm, I yeah. um. I actually, when uh, when we got put into lockdown again, I um I went to Tesco and obviously did my big food shop and I went past the aisle with the um, hair dye and I was looking thinking, could I do it myself? I was thinking, if I do it myself, could it work? And I went against it, but I might have to go go back there today and get my hair dye and get it done again. Get it bleached well, be, ca be careful if you get peroxide, you could end yeah. up with all your hair falling out. That's, that's what I'm worried about. If I went yeah. to the next game, turned up and everyone saw me bold. The question I've got for you, though, is, <laughs> uh, and I thought of it when you were talking about Jack Stacey, because yes. he's been in the press quite a lot about what he's doing off the pitch in terms of yeah, his yeah. degree and courses and so on. 
have you started thinking yet about your future after you finish playing? I know it's not going to be for a decade or so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course. Uh, no, it's it's important. We um, there's a lot of people who come in and talk to us during our our season about about thinking about it because it really does creep up on you. And I was I was actually speaking to Chris Cohen, the, the coach, the other day about about that sort of thing and 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 how you know what you want to do because right now I personally have no idea what I'd like to do after football, but but I need to start thinking about it because when it, when it creeps around on you, you, you're going to have to make a split second decision. So I've, I've, I've spoke to Stacey as well about his, his degree. He's a, he's a smart lad. He's, um, he's got it all planned out. He's had it planned out since he's about 21. I think he, he knew what he was doing after football and, and getting it all done. So I think, I think for me, I, I quite like to stay in football, whether that be the coaching part or the scouting part. It's, um it's hard to tell, but, but I, 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 I always get pushed by my dad. My dad's a school teacher and he's always, um, he's always on to me about furthering my education because it is important. So um, I've looked into a few like open, open university degrees and trying to find something that, that I find enjoyable and I, and I want to do because there's no point me studying something I'm not going to want to do and waste my time with it. So um, I think the coaching part could be a, could be a thing that the PFA are really good at um, putting on um, the badges for people to go and do. And you go away for a week and you do them all. I think James Collins is doing them all at the minute and, and Martin Craney. And, and that could be a, a thing that I want to do the coaching or, or maybe going into um, into scouting because I've always enjoyed watching football and, and going to games and, and, and looking at players and seeing who I think is a good player and who's not. So that could be a, a route for the future. But personally, at the minute, I actually, I don't know what I want to do. I want to concentrate on my football at the minute and um, hopefully it'll, it'll fall into place. So. Actually, you, can, I, you, can I just say, listen, Harry, I think... Listen to your dad. Dads are always right, <laughs> they especially are, when they're teachers. Yeah, they are. He's, he's always pushing me. You know, he, he, he's been brilliant with me, actually. So I think that's important and, and, and trying to get future ready. Harry, Harry can I just say, I've listened to you. I heard you do a co-commentary once with Statho, didn't you? And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and actually hearing you today, you, I think you're one of the most articulate footballers that we often see so oh, i really think that might be something you can think about because you really are be... you're, you're very good at coming across oh thank you no the commentary was brilliant i remember doing that with, with simon pitts i really enjoyed that i actually couldn't have picked a better game as well that was the uh portsmouth three two and that was in the snow blistering cold oh. no, i really enjoyed doing that it was it was a lot of fun doing that so, so maybe, maybe commentary could be the way forward or, or punditry maybe something like that who knows well, yeah, see, I, was just, I was listening to that in rio of all places so it, it didn't feel cold in rio but it was great well, let result. me tell you it was freezing that day. Oh my that, god! That's your degree course sorted, then, Harry. Communications. Yeah. Perfect. I'll, I'll have as soon as we finish the Zoom. I'll get onto it. I'll get the PFA <laughs> on the line and see see what they can do. Hey, Harry. Harry, how, how's the painting going? Is that not an option for you? Well, actually, well, uh, to be fair, that that went really well. The painting, and I had a lot of offers, big money offers for the for the painting to try and buy off me, but I couldn't sell it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I know I thought about doing another one, but I actually I couldn't do any more time. The amount of time I spent on that painting was, and the amount of stress, it was too stressful. It was too stressful doing that painting. I can't do that ever again. But I've actually got that framed in the house now. The tiger's on my on the top of my Brilliant. staircase. Brilliant. It helped. Oh yeah. Count. Was it? Not, didn't it? Painting by numbers. Paint, yeah. <laughs> well, I think I think you could never commentate again. on the game pretty well because. The commentary yesterday's game, I don't know who the, the lady was who was commentating for the BBC, but Chelsea <laughs> got three points out of it. So, yeah, I, I, I you know, I thought our commentary, being a, being a commentary was a really, a really downer on the game itself. Yeah. But, it was, dre yeah. it was dreadful and it wasn't yeah. only the woman, it was the bloke as well. They were yeah, both awful. It was really was, Absolutely you know, awful. It but was Chelsea, 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 yeah, Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea all the time. Yeah, and, that doesn't surprise you know, me. That everybody doesn't surprise forgets. Me. Everybody forgets this is a bread and butter team. This is where everybody learns their trade to go on and you get these professionals like they are, call themselves uh, diving and tripping over over and nobody touching them and that. And you think, yeah, good old Luton. Get down there on a Saturday. You see proper football. Not yeah, you're right. Fair. Can not I just say, I, I thought Karen Kearney knew more about us than any of the experts in the studio. Oh, she knew yeah. more about us as yeah, yeah. players than Danny yeah. Murphy knew yeah. or any of the others. She actually knew more about Luton. She made that mistake with three points. Yeah. But a commentator couldn't even say the Wild Loire's name, did he? No. No. Lua, Lua. 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 Lua,
<laughs> the, the, this morning, this morning's press is this morning's press is even worse. Uh, is the written press, I mean, both the Telegraph and the Express, their reports they don't even mention Luton. Uh, no. I mean, actually, they don't, they don't report on the game. All the, all they're talking about is young Chelsea players and Lampard's yeah. future and that sort of thing. And yeah. there's two match reports there, and other than and they don't even mention the the goal is only mentioned as a Chelsea slip up. You know, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, that was two yeah. papers anyway. Oh, on that ridiculous. subject, can I ask you a question? Yeah, uh, Harry. Um, obviously, the uh, teams like Luton hashtag trends like every, pretty much every game. How do the players yeah. feel about that? Obviously, you must see it. You must see that. Yeah. Where where Tret is a, a relatively small club. Does that play into your hands a bit? Do you, does that is that more of a focus for you? Does that drive you on or? Uh, sometimes it does. I think everyone does say little old Luton, and, and it's really not the case. It, it isn't. We, if you look at the, the the following we take to most away games, it's better than most Championship clubs. Oh yeah. So, so that that's a testament to the fans. But um, it, sometimes it does. I, I think in, in, in games you go into games and, and you think you you're being undermined a little bit. You think they're looking down on you a little bit. The other players and the, you go to these bigger stadiums with more more seats and and you think think to yourself like. They, they, they're not paying us any respect here and it does spur you on a tiny bit because you do think oh I want to turn these over a little bit more just because of how disrespectful they've been to, to you but um, I think that would just always be the case and I think it really plays into our hands at home when, when people come to Kenilworth and um, it's, visually it's probably not the most appealing stadium and, and they come down and, and they probably think to themselves oh like this is Luton Town but, but whenever they come and we're up for it we're always up for a fight at Luton Town we was up to put, put ourselves about, and I think that really helps us <laughs> when, when, when players come and, and then they're not up for it and they're not putting hundred percent in because it gives us the advantage at home. And I think that's why our home record's always been so good because we, we always know what we're going to do at home. That's that's how we play. That's how we're going to get get to get to business. And, and they're not up for it. They'll get turned over. Mm-hmm. Cheers, Harry, Harry. Can I ask a question? Go yeah, of course, Harry. Sorry, Harry. Um. Just a little bit of an odd one, really. I mean, they feed you down at the Brace. What is the food like down there? Do you enjoy it? And also, do you sort of stick to, if you fancy a Chinese at night, you don't have it? Or how do you carry on? Yeah, I think, well, down at, down at the Brace. It's been a bit hard recently with um, with the COVID situation that you can't... Usually there's a, a but not a buffet system, but the the chef there is is called Alex and there's Christiana as well. There's there's a really good they came in this year and they, they've been really good recently with what they're cooking in and, and they, they always make sure that they're putting on the right things. Because it's important after training you get the right amount of carbohydrates, proteins and, and vegetables in. And um and that's a testament to, to James Redden as well, the sports scientist, because he makes sure that every meal we have after training and before training as well, to be fair is specific to the, the workload we've got. So say, for example, it would be a Saturday, Saturday game from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you, you're probably not going to have as many carbohydrates, so as much rice and pasta as, as you would on the Thursday and Friday. So they, they, they're they brilliant. And uh, to be fair, they're actually good chefs. Alex has come in and he's, he's knocked up a few good dishes, which are, which have been nice. And, um, and, and in terms of the eating at home, it's, um, yeah, strictly no takeaways in the week. You might you might treat yourself on a on a Saturday after a game if, if you've yeah. had a good game to uh, to a takeaway and, and maybe a chocolate bar. But during the week, is is try and stay as healthy as possible and, and not not eat badly. Thank you. No worries you. at all. Can I ask what's the difference between Graham Jones and Nathan Jones as a manager? Good question. Um, <laughs> Turn the recording off. <laughs> um, for me personally, Graham Jones. Graham Jones was brilliant, brilliant for me. Um, I had my best season to date with with him, him as manager, and um, and and he 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 came in and he had his certain style of play that he liked to play with, and and it really suited me. It sort of was the perfect system for me to play my best source, my best football under him. And uh, he was always brilliant, brilliant with me. Some of the other lads didn't get on with him as well as I did. Um, but that, that's football. Not not every manager is going to take a shine to you and, and play you. So you just got to get on with it. But they're, they're, they're very different managers in terms of how they how they deal with players. Uh, their player management is very different. 
but um, but they they both have their their pros and cons. I thought Graham Jones is a brilliant tactician. I think I think he's just got the, a job at Newcastle. He's just moved from Bournemouth to Newcastle, um, and, and you're not getting moves. You're not going to go to Bournemouth and then to Newcastle if you don't have, if you don't know what you're doing. And, and uh, obviously, it didn't work out for him as well as he would have hoped at the club, and um, and he left, and then they, Nathan Jones came in, came back in, and um, helped us stay up. So. They're, they're different managers, but they, for me personally, they're both brilliant. A coach and a manager, then probably. Uh, maybe, maybe I, I can't say too much, obviously. But for no. me personally, he was brilliant, and um, he helped me a lot. He, he was a brilliant coach, and he was a brilliant tactician, Graham Jones. So I've I've got a lot to thank for him for what what he helped me do last season. So uh, can I just add something to that as well? I think Graham uh, Harry will agree with me on this. Graham's a lovely guy, and uh, he, he got on. You know, showed everybody a lot of respect, and it was it was his first managerial job as well. I think that needs to be taken into account. But Nathan, in a few interviews since he's taken over, he's always mentioned the fact that without the results we picked up before lockdown, we wouldn't have stayed up. The, the turnaround had actually started under Graham, and uh, you know, I think he deserves he deserves uh, you know a fair amount of credit for that, and. Uh, and as you say, as, you know, as a coach, he, Harry worked under him. I, I watched a few of his sessions, but um, you don't do what he's done, like with World Cup semi final. No, they didn't get to the final, did they? Yeah. Semi final, semi final, yeah. Bar in the World Cup without being a, a, a really good coach. So, but he's a nice guy. Can I just as well? There was somebody mentioned the reports from yesterday, and obviously Frank Lampard's been sacked, hasn't he, this morning? That the. the uh, the reporters there yesterday, just to give you an example of why we haven't got a mention in the papers this morning, is they, they are all there for that story, basically. There was probably, at the minute, it's strange because the, the press conference is done on Zoom uh, there. And I went into a room with Nathan and they had a laptop set up. And there was probably 20 journalists down the side of this panel on the Zoom webinar. And there were three people that asked questions. One was the Sky Sports News reporter, Ian Bolton, who led it. And uh, the other two were Mike Simmons from the Luton News and James Cunliffe, who we all know from the Lutonian. The other, the other nationals, they weren't interested in us at all. Or Frank Lampard had been in there for about 20 minutes. We were waiting outside, me and Nathan, for ages. So that gives you a little sort of indication of, uh, of why we were just a footnote in the, um, in the reports this morning. And as we've seen in the last couple of hours, uh, exactly why, really. Yeah. Very well. Thank you. Yeah. I know we've got one final question from Roger, but anybody else, uh, opportunity to ask Harry a question? Uh, can I just ask, Harry, who's the best player you've played with so far? Um, what, this season or in my uh, whole career? In your career. Um, okay, good question. Um, I probably... Probably be between two. I think when I was at Bournemouth um, and I was trained with the first team a few times, I think um, Junior Stanislas was probably up there for, for his technical ability in, in training. He was he, he, he never really put a foot wrong in training and his technique was unbelievable. And then, to, don't want to blow his, blow his trumpet and get his ego any bigger, but Dewsbury Hall is, yeah, he's very, 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 very talented. And I think he, he's going to go a long way in the game. Um, he, He's only young and, and that, and, but I, I can't see him not playing for Leicester next year. I think I think he really is that good, and and it shows when we play. He always stands out. Um, he always looks like our best player usually when we play. And I think yesterday when I when I was playing, I didn't really notice it as much. But when I came off and I was watching from the from the bench the last 20, 30 minutes, he didn't look out of place in the game at all. And and you wouldn't have top, you wouldn't have been able to tell if he wasn't a Chelsea or a a Luton player at the time, I think he, he really is that good. Yeah, he's excellent. He's an excellent player. Good. Thank you. No worries. Um, Harry, is that is that difficult when, when one player sticks out? Uh, uh, have the others feel about him getting the attention? Uh, not not at all. I think that that's part of football. I think we're, we're just grateful to have him, have him on loan and, and have him playing for us and, and no one else because... I'm sure he had offers in January to to go elsewhere, and he, he's he's decided to stay with us. Which I think it's brilliant for us as a team, and I think he makes us play better. I don't think 
anyone looks around and says, oh, it's annoying he wins this or does this. I think I think we're all just so happy that he's on our team, really, and, and not on anyone else's. That's very good to hear. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Harry, you mentioned you, you uh, roomed with Jack Stacey. Who's your closest friends within the current playing squad, would you say, at the moment? Um, uh, at, at the minute, probably Harry Eistead. I, I live with him. Years ago, years ago, it was me, him, and, and Harry Eistead. So Harry Eistead is probably the closest, but there, there is actually a really good group of lads at Luton, and I don't, I don't, I've never heard of another club having it. I think the people you you probably don't think that you'd be friends with at the club, you are. Like every day, you can go in, and I'd have a different conversation with Sonny Bradley as to what I'd have with Elliot Lee to Luke Berry. But everyone at the club really is; they are friends on and off the pitch, which I think you don't get any other clubs. I don't think. I don't know any of my friends outside of of Luton who have they come and say to me, "Oh, like our club is so good, like we're so well internetted in the team." But I think at Luton it really is, and there isn't a club like us. But there's some really good friendship groups, and a lot of people out there, they're really good friends. Like Luke Berry and Danny Hilton are so close. Elliot Lee and George Moncur are so close. There's so many friendships that have, that have come from Luton Town that will probably stay for the rest of people's lives, which I think is brilliant. Yeah, definitely. Good. One other that, that's uh, been sent in was um, if we have a normal summer, what would your ideal, you know, if we have a normal uh, close season and everything returns to normal, what would you love to do this summer? Through that? Yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot I've been missing out on. Um, I, I'd probably say when, when we got promoted from League One, that, that Vegas trip was, was brilliant. That really was. So if I could do that again with the lads, that'd be, that'd be lovely. And, um, I think in the, I think it'd be go home and see my friends and family back in Bournemouth. I think that's been it's been hard to to not go and see them and and, and spend time with with that. I've got my brother had a baby uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, so I've got a little nephew that I've been able to see. So it's just been FaceTimes galore with with them. Uh, so probably go home and and see my family and friends. Trip to Vegas with the with the football lot, and then um, uh, that'll probably be it. Maybe maybe go. I'd like to have a nice relaxing holiday in Bali, maybe. That, that'd be the one. That'd be my summer. My perfect summer. Bali, Vegas and Bournemouth. <laughs> Bali, Vegas. <laughs> in no particular order. Yeah, yeah, no that, particular that'd order. That'd be perfect. But, but, I recommend Bournemouth. Yeah. Um, Bournemouth yeah. <laughs> if the sun's shining, there is no place like Bournemouth. I will say that. You wouldn't know that you weren't in, uh, you wouldn't know that you weren't in Marbella. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. Bali. <laughs> or Bali, yeah. Roger, over to you, Roger. Yeah, we've got one, one question here. Um, um, if you could invite any six people to a dinner party, dead or alive, who yeah. would you invite? Brilliant. You've probably been asked that before. But, yeah, uh... I have. Um, who, who do I invite? Um, you've got to have a, the thing with that is, I always get asked a similar question. That you've got to have a good mix of people. So you'd have to have one from each. I think I'd go for, I'd go, first of all, I'd probably go Ricky Gervais. For a bit of comedy and someone who's a bit, a bit out there, Ricky Gervais would be there. Pro I'd probably go for a, someone of one of my footballing idols. I probably would go Frank Lampard, just footballing idol at Chelsea. Um, and then I'd probably go for someone, maybe go like the Dalai Lama or Martin Luther King down that route. A lot to learn. Um, and then. And then I'd go, I'd have to invite a nice lady. Uh, I'd go for, who would I go? I'd go for J-Lo. Yeah. J-Lo, maybe. <laughs> no, all, the, all, the older, all the older ones on here are going, who? Haven't got a clue. That's a great question. I wouldn't know. I'd have, if I had the time, I'd sit down and make sure I got it all right. But off the top of my head, that'd probably be the six. Yeah, I was actually fortunate to meet the Dalai Lama once, and he was brilliant. Was yeah, it he, when he gave a talk in London? He was. He made you feel like he was your best friend. Was, yeah, was good, good guess. I need that. I need that in my life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Anybody met J Lo though? No. No, I'd be jealous. Of, I'd be more jealous of that, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, you mentioned Frank Lampard. What do you yeah. think about his sacking? Um, As a Chelsea fan, that is. Yeah, yeah it's, I, think it's, I think it's a bit rash, but 
the, the problem with football these days is if you're not getting the results, it's, it's too easy to just sack someone and just to get someone else in. It's it's, it's modern football for you. I think you, you won't see any managers now with staying for more than ten years. But as soon as as soon as something bad starts happening at the club, you forget everything they've done well for the club, and and, and people start talking about getting them sacked, and you just think how how can that be possible? But it's, it's what Chelsea do that they'll bring in someone they'll probably get a little short term result and then the same thing will happen when the next manager doesn't do so well for a few games but I think it's a rash decision I think it's a bit of a silly one but that's that's what football is like these days yeah can I ask why are you a Chelsea fan? Um, I'm a Chelsea fan basically my brother supported Chelsea so my dad supports Man City he's always supported Man City when they feed the goat, Sean Goater and Paolo yeah. one shot those days. And then my brother just started supporting Chelsea. I'm not sure why. And I, I've copied what he's done my whole life, really. I've always looked up to him. So whatever he did, I did. So he said, it's a Chelsea fan. And I said, well, guess what? I'm a Chelsea fan too. And uh, right. been like that. I'm not, I'm not a, a full Chelsea fan. I don't go to all the games. I'm more of a, a glory supporting armchair fan. But I just follow my brother. If you follow your brother, when's the baby due? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not, not anytime soon. Not until Jay, Jennifer Lopez comes around. Not until I see Jennifer. Well, a huge thank you for, from us all, Harry, for giving up your time. Yeah. No yeah. worries at all. I've enjoyed it. It's been brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Harry. We really appreciate it. No um, worries at all. For everyone else, we'll be back to the normal time next Monday. So it'll be uh, 10 o'clock. And uh, yeah. Roger, what are we doing? Are we uh, talking about? Past managers still. We are, yeah, we've we saved that, haven't we? Yeah. We've only got part way through the past managers, so I think we just got to uh, Mike Newell. So I'm sure there'll be some interesting conversations next week. So, uh, <laughs> so, so thank you, Harry. Thank you, Stuart, for organising again. We no really worries. Appreciate it. It. Thank, thank you, Harry. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank guys. Thank really you. Enjoyed it. Come on. Thanks, Harry. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. No, we want later, to hopefully. line up Paul Buckle for next week for you. Hopefully, see you yes. for a yeah. cool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't unanimous, was it? There. No. <laughs> Have a good right, week, everyone. Please yeah, stay safe, yeah. and we'll see you next Monday. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.